Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to be looking at how Flaming Dragon, my ant weight B div or plastic div, uh, went at Havoc 3. Uh, so yeah, this guy goes in the plastic division uh, all the time, which is our old uh, B grade, but has now been upgraded to a plastic league, hence the ability to have a plastic weapon. Now, just like every other video uh, that I have done as a fight report from Havoc 3, uh, the first day I don't have full footage of, I only have time-lapse footage, uh, so the first two fights we're going to look at today are in time-lapse form. Uh, and speaking of, we might as well jump straight into those with a fight against Dozer. Dozer is a tank style robot with a bulldozer scoop on the front. So that was interesting. I don't know what's going on with this at the moment. I think I changed something in the wheels uh, and I've used the weapon a little bit, but for whatever reason, it's now bouncing. There's just a point where the weapon just scrapes the ground and it causes the whole robot to jump. Uh, and you might not have really seen that in the time-lapse footage, but I think there's like one frame of it where I'm sitting in the pit where the whole robot jumps and it's up on an angle like this. That's because I was still running the weapon in the pit and yeah, it bounces around and when the weapon hits the ground it jumps high so I know I've got power in the weapon I just need to be able to hit it into people. Uh, the lack of any kind of uh, feeder wedges is kind of hurting me uh, a little bit and I do have a plan and some weight to fix that problem uh, but we'll probably do that in or I'll probably do that off camera actually and then just put it straight into an event with feeder wedges on it I think. Uh, and of course we did get pushed into the pit there because while we're four wheel drive, we're four wheel drive on four O-rings. They are four wheel drive or technically two track drive, which means they're just always gonna have the pushing power on us. They have so much more grip on the ground. Uh, so it was basically an inevitability, especially with the fact that the weapon wasn't uh, hitting as hard as it possibly could have been. Because if we'd managed to get a track off, that whole fight would have been different. But uh, of course we did not. So, the next fight up is up against a robot called Spooky. Now, uh, it's actually a robot you guys have seen. It is this guy. The mask robot I built uh, as the Halloween Will It Bot. Uh, it wasn't intended on going into competition because it actually built it after the competition uh, signups had finished. However, uh, one of the event organizers, Chris, he had a walking robot that was mostly working but would sometimes just power itself down for no particular reason. Uh, so rather than fight that and have kind of disappointing fights with that, he borrowed Spooky, uh, which we then named Spooky uh, off me and put it into the competition instead. Um, yeah, so I will say Spooky did go into fights uh, 10 grams overweight, but Chris basically knew this and kind of, uh, yeah, was knew that he wasn't going to get a trophy or anything and wasn't expecting to because Spooky is a bit of a, um, shall we say ridiculous build. Let's, let's just call it a ridiculous build. I, this, this fight, I think, is the one out of all of the fights that I've only got time-lapse footage for that I really, really wanted to actually show you guys, because this fight was hilarious. Spooky is just wild. It's so, so, so fast, but it has a decent amount of pushing power and it has a decent amount of clamp in the jaws if you can get them around somebody. Also, something that I was not expecting at all is that I managed to push Spooky over on its side at one point and Chris was able to self-right Spooky from that position, get it back onto its wheels. And I can't really remember exactly how he did that, but he did it and it worked. Um, so all of that is stuff that I was very surprised about with Spooky. I, it drives better than I was expecting it to. Like I said, it is still quite fast and kind of uncontrollable, but... It's, it's an interesting robot, and uh, I am going to try and strip the extra 10 grams out of it so it's 
properly competition legal and I might even put it into the next event we have rather than Flaming Dragon. I don't know yet. I, I kind of don't want to run more than one uh, plastic div robot, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to make a choice at some point between the two of them. Now, the other thing that might not be clear is that the end of that fight was a draw because we both ended up in the pit at the same time. We both, we were driving around either edge of the pit and we both made driving errors basically at exactly the same time and stacked it into the pit on top of, like we collided into the pit together. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was kind of ridiculous as a fight goes. So after that, fun and ridiculous fight. Uh, we go on to the second day, so I actually have footage of this very next fight, and it is up against Smasher, which is an axe uh, robot. <laughs> So that was an interesting fight. Nate, uh, who is one of the youngest drivers in our competition, does what he does best, which is dance all over the arena. Uh, he was very, very difficult to push while he was dancing around the place because, yeah, with the weapon going, if I set it too high, I would bounce, which wasn't great. Uh, if I set it too low, I wasn't really doing anything with the weapon. Uh, at one point, I gave up on the spinner entirely and just joined him in throwing plastic axes around, which was kind of fun, to be perfectly honest. Uh, and of course, I did get a nice good push on him over towards the pit, and of course, as soon as I got him near the pit, he stopped dancing and he zoomed his way back out of there. Uh, he did, of course, make a little driving error right at the end and get himself in the pit on his own merit. Uh, but yeah, there was a step up there from dancing near the pit to actually understanding that he was in trouble and scooching his way out of trouble. Um, yeah, so that was that was an interesting fight, and we won that one. So right now, Flaming Dragon is sitting at uh, one win, one draw, and one loss. However, uh, our final fight of the day was supposed to be up against a robot called Dr. Mad Lifts-A-Lot or something. 
uh, I, I can't remember the full title of the robot. But anyway, it was a lifting robot built by the same people that built uh, Dr. Mad Spins a lot and Dr. Robot a lot. I think those are the right names. They have Dr. and Robot and stuff in them a number of times and all of them are just slightly different variations on each other. So my, I get them confused in my head quite easily. Anyway. Uh, they had a lifting robot. I was supposed to have that as my fourth and final fight. Unfortunately, uh, sometime during the weekend, they had to pull the lifter out of commission. Uh, so we won that fight by default, which means that we ended the competition on two wins, a draw and a loss, which was just enough to eke out a third place because the B grade or the plastic divs don't actually do any form of um, finals or anything. They just yeah, round robin points determine who goes through because uh, there wasn't actually uh, two round robin brackets. It was just everybody for everybody. There wasn't too many in the plastic class this time around. Uh, so there you go. Anyway, that is the final fight report wrapped up and done for High Ro uh, Havoc, Robot Havoc 3. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed all of these as we've gone through. I still have two more videos on a couple of different things that are coming out uh, from Havoc 3 stuff that I did around Havoc 3. One of which will be the Hardox Beetle, which is around here somewhere. Um, and then there is one other thing as well that I did there. So that'll be the next couple of videos and then we'll be moving back into some build stuff. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.